question is our change management uh, session. So we'll get right into it. So we're going to go over the change management module, the reporting module, as most of you already know about any Q&A and some training resources. So by the end of the session, you'll have a better understanding of how to create a change document, request and log subquotes, and create a change order. So this diagram or workflow is really, you want to think about when you have to create a change, what is it that you want to do? Okay. So if a change is required, does this affect the owner's contract, the contract we hold with the owner? Or is this an owner cash allowance? Um, so then this differentiates whether this is an internal change or an external change. Okay, so an external change always affects the prime billing. Okay, internal change does not. So uh, today we're going to do an external change, but you can see here before we move on, internal changes, there are different types of internal changes. So. Uh, here, is this a loss to Elliston, or is this being paid from a different budget line? If it's a true loss, you're going to create, it's an actual internal change. Uh, if it's being paid from a different budget line, it's going to be created as a budget change. Um, and then there are different ones here. For external, um, has the owner requested this change? If the owner has not, it's just a change request. Um, if they have, then you have to ask, is this change part of the main billing or miscellaneous billing? So for those that took the financial session last week or previously, you know that we can have uh, different pay application layouts. So one could be your main uh, billing and one could be maybe for pursuit um, charges, permit uh, charges, uh, which can also be called the miscellaneous billing. Um, if it's a main billing, then you have to ask, is the owner requesting a price or requesting to proceed immediately? So if they're requesting a price, typically it's what we call a contemplated change order. Um, if they just want us to proceed immediately, we typically call that a change directive. And uh, if it's a miscellaneous, part of a miscellaneous billing, then we will call it a uh, miscellaneous change. Okay. So for today's demonstration, we're going to do a contemplated change order. Um, so this is something that the owner is requesting price on. It was requested by the owner. Therefore, it is an external change, which also affects the prime billing. So here's another uh, flow chart. So this is, there are changes that affect the prime billing and changes that do not affect the prime billing, right? There's the internal and the external changes. So in this one that does not affect the prime billing, you can see they pretty much all look the same, but this one that does not affect the prime billing does not require a change order, okay? However, it does go uh, for approval or for review and it's operations and costing that reviews and um, approves that, that change, okay? So you can see from here, they're both the same. You create your change details. You gather your quotes to create that summary to send to the owner. Um, and then once that's been reviewed and approved by the owner, we can then go and uh, send uh, submit distribution to costing and in this case operations for approval. And then a subcontractor change order uh, may be issued. And where changes that do affect the prime billing, the change order is required and it only goes to costing for review and approval. Okay, so just think external, anything that affects prime billing, the owner's billing does require a change order. Okay, so this is just reiterating changes that don't affect the prime billing do not require a change order, but are approved by operations and costing. Changes affecting prime billing do require a change order and it's approved by costing only. Okay, so these are some considerations before you create a uh, change. So the prime pay application layout, uh, the, you know, are those automatic change lines uh, being automatically created, uh, totaling instructions, uh, how it, do you want it displayed on the owner's billing? Um, so depending on the type of contract we hold with the owner, 
um, you know, it may, you can customize, uh, customize the look and feel of the billing to the owner. And then your financials, you want to make sure that uh, your cost account have been, uh, have been inputted or uploaded to your project, that budget lines have been created and linked to your cost account, that budget tiers have been managed, set up and managed um, in order to use for changes. Okay, so these are some of the considerations. So typically, um, I know in a few projects, uh, when we when they do use tiers for changes, I believe they use tier number 90, um, and then um, any changes uh, will be displayed under tier 90. It just keeps it nice and clean and organized. Okay, we're going to go into the changes settings. Um, so we're going to look at the change parameters, the change type, the budget and billing lines, the change information access, and change summary. So this is usually done at, at, at the start of, of the project. Uh, one of our consultants uh, will uh, typically sit down with the PM of record and carve out um, how they want to manage the project in B3 and, and configure the settings. So we're going to go in there. So I'm going to log in as a PM in the training environment. And I'm just going to access my project from there. And now I'm going to go over to change management, it's right here. That's going to take me to the gate three um, old user interface. So to access the settings from here, I'm going to go start administration settings and then look for my um, change management. So I'm going to open that up. Okay. And then I'm just going to click edit here. So again, if um, you'll see when you are in edit mode because these banners will be changed from blue to um, a green light color. So I'm click edit. And now you can see that we are in edit mode. So right here, change types. So here is where all the change types that are gonna be used on the project are set up. Um, so for example, you would click add change type. So the PM will come in here um, add, you know, if there was another change type to be added, they would add that. Then um, you have to add a prefix. And this will be part of the change, uh, change document number. So, um, for example, contemplated uh, change order prefix is CCO. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, so here where it says level, anything under overall, they're automatically pulled in from the overall level. So these would have already been set up in your project. Anything you see on uh, level, project level was created by a project team member or the PM in the settings. Okay. So then you would just enter um, a change type here and the prefix. I'm just going to cancel out. And then if you did do that, you'd have to click apply. I'm just going to cancel out of this one. Next section here, this is asking you, do you want to automatically create budget and billing lines in, in gate three for these change types and which change types? So for example, here, uh, this contemplated change order, I want to automatically, when I'm creating a change, I want to automatically create a budget and billing line for this contemplated change order. And I also have set up in my training environment, um, if I create a contemplated change order, um, it's going to move it to this budget tier 10. Okay. And also there um, needs to be a, uh, should be a prefix number associated to the change type. Okay, and I'll explain that momentarily. Um, and then there, then you're going to put in what prime contract payout layout this is going to be um, allocated to. So, as I mentioned earlier, you can have multiple uh, prime contract payout layouts. Um, in this case, I want it to go uh, into my monthly billing. But if you had miscellaneous billing, that's where it's supposed to go you can definitely change that. Um, so that is this section here. 
Um, so this also will make up part of the uh, change document number, your prefix that's associated to the change type. Okay, down here we have change reason and issue codes. So when you go create that change document in gate three, you will have the option to select a change reason based on what's been configured in the settings here. Um, there will be a drop down and you will select that change reason and also for issue codes as well. Okay, you can add um, multiple, another one if you want to, and then you just click apply. Okay, and this is also good for reporting, for filtering reports. Um, so you can set up as many change reasons and issue codes as you want. This next session, uh, section in settings is automatic SEO issuing. SEO stands for subcontractor change order. So I have here um, issue SEOs as soon as change distribution is approved. So it's basically saying, do you want to issue a subcontractor change order as soon as costing has approved the change distribution? Yes. So my default is yes, but when in the change, um, you will see that my default is yes here. I can always change this to no, and I can also change it within that change document. Okay. There is a change, a standard change phrase that gets pulled in from the settings into your change document. You will see that. Um, and then here I have, um, so in my subject, you'll notice when I create that change, you will, um, in the subject change, will uh, appear with this little dash number. And then um, what I have for content, I believe in this project is the, uh, the name of the primary consultant. Um, so you can, the PM would come in here, they could always override this insert a placeholder okay and there's options as to by default what you want to see in the subject line um, and in the description um, and then you can obviously you can change that and you can add to it if you want okay. um, all right so i'm just going to cancel that uh all right so change summary so this here is, um, you can set up a percentage, uh, so an overhead and profit percentage for subcontracted quotes, self-performed quotes, and unassigned quotes, or any other cost. So when you go into your change, let's say you create a subcontracted quote, and in the settings you have set it up where you want to automatically add 10%, overhead and profit, that 10% will appear in that change document, okay? And then here we've also added a cost account, so we know where we want that 10% to be allocated to, and, and it's going to appear under this cost account, okay? So this can be set up in the settings as well, okay? And then uh, if you want to um, set up any other costs, as you can see here in my project, I have insurance, subguard, CMC, profit overhead, and profit. These are just examples. So when I go into my change, these will automatically appear. And if I want to add an amount to them, um, I can definitely do that. Okay, so that is um, just so you have a better understanding of where this information is coming from when you go into your change documents and how it's put together and created. Okay, so I'm just going to go back here. Um, so this is the changes numbering configuration. So there, the numbering configuration for a change is you will see your prefix. Okay, so let's say, um, so let's go back to the settings. The prefix for contemplated change order in this project is 102. It can be any number. So here I just have a, an example displayed as the prefix for CCO is a one, okay? Um, change number, that is generated by gate three when you submit the change details. You can have, it's up to three digits um, and it is sequential, okay? Um, so for example, 
here is um, your change number, and you can see 001. Um, and then you have, um, so if you were to issue another one, it would be CCO-002. Um, and then you have your budget line, your main change line. So this is an example. So here is your prefix for this CCO as an example. Here is your document change document number 001. And then you have your main change line, 01. So anything other than subcontracted quotes will be allocated to your main change line, the 01. So anything like unassigned or self-performed quotes will, uh, even overhead and profit, will show up under the main line. Subquotes, um, it's sequential, so you will, it will follow the 01. So it will always be a 02, never a 01 at the end. Is this is for everything other than subcontracted quotes. So as you can see on the bottom here for subquotes, it would be 02, uh, 03, 04, and so on. So here's another example. This is for a change directive. The prefix for the change directive change type is four. The change number uh, as an example is 099 because you're allowed up to three digits up to 100. And then you have your subquotes. Any questions on this? I'll try to make it a little more clear as we get into it. Okay, well, let's go back. So we're gonna go into the changes module. Um, so to access the changes from this user interface, you can go start, uh, financials and um, change management. Um, and this is the default view. So here are all the changes that have been created in my project. So here's the change number, uh, change document number, um, the, the subject, the change order number, if that is required, it will, the change order number will appear here. You'll notice there are different statuses. So you have a change status. So this is um, when you've created the change, the details of the change and submitted that. Um, that's a change status, and you can have draft or active. Um, summary status is when we've gathered all the quotes and submitted the summary to the owner. So that could be under review, could be in draft, it could be active. Um, and then finally, the distribution status, uh, when it goes to costing and or operations for review. And again, you can have that in draft, under review, and active. And you can see quoted costs. Approved cost, total cost, the date was created, the date was submitted, the date it was approved, and this is just a gate three generated reference number. You can open up that change document by clicking here under the actions column. If you just want to sh show the quotes, you can click on show quotes, um, or if ones that have a change order, you can click open change order to view it. I'm just going to scroll to the far left. Um, and then you can also open the change document by um, clicking the change number. So let's go ahead and create a new change. So, um, so you always, if you're going to create a brand new change, you're going to select this one. Okay. Um, you can also create a change order within the change. However, if you had to create it separately, a change order for the change, you would come here. But we're going to click New Change. Okay, and you can see at the top here, you have different sections. So Change Details, Quote, Summary, Distribution, Attachments, and Comments. So right now, we're in the Change Details. So I just want to pull up this chart. Okay, so a change, this is explaining really what a change is. It changes any change to the original contract regarding the scope of work, price, or schedule agreed upon between any two parties in a construction project. It can be movement of money. So, for example, budget change or drawdown, cash allowance, contingency. Um, and this is where we are right now. Change details. So, change details document initiates the beginning of the change process. It is a document that contains all the change details that's needed to be able to log a change order. 
A change document accommodates any change type request. So that's what we're doing right now. So here you're going to select your change type. And again, this is pulled in from the settings. So right here, let me just go back there. This is that drop down we're seeing right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our change type. So contemplate a change order. This change number, you can um, add your own. Uh, however, GA3 will assign a change number automatically and it's sequential. So um, I'm going to leave that blank. And if you recall, remember when I said in the subject, let me just go back there. It would pull in, because uh, this is what I have, is change and that little dash. Okay, and I think for content or description of primary consultants, so let's toggle back. Okay, so that's why that is there. You can easily override that. Um, I'm going to put it to the pin. Okay, and then um, I'm going, so it's just pulled in from the settings, based on the placeholder I have in the settings. Um, and uh, I'm going to put um, pin. This is just an example. All right, so creation date. So this is the date that the owner came to you and said, hey, can you give me a price on this retaining wall expansion as an example? So maybe that request came in yesterday and this is the date that you're actually creating the change. So this is hard coded right here. If you have a primary consultant change number, you can add that here, okay? And this here, this is being pulled in from my um, project profile. So change requested by Tom Architect. So this is the owner. Um, I can show company and contact information by clicking here or search contact. Maybe it's a different um, owner. And then I can come in here and select that. Okay. But this um, is pulled in based on my project profile, what I have in my project profile. So if you want to find that information, just go to start project profile and then key contacts. So there it is. There's my primary contact from um, architect. So it, it's pulled in from here. Okay. And then again, this is uh, what I showed you in the settings. So that is the change reason and issue code right here. So that's what we have here. So change reason. So I'm going to select client request and then issue code. Uh, I'll just select design. And then here, that's that change phrase that was pulled in again from the settings. That's this right here. Okay. Um, so if at this point you have any attachments that you want to add, you can do that here. And just keep in mind that um, any attachments you add here will be sent with all quote requests. So I'm going to add my attachment. Uh, I can find. Right here. Okay. And then any additional comments you want to add, you can definitely add in here. Okay. So this is the first part of the change process is entering all the change details. Okay. So at this point, when you're done, you would come down here and click submit change details. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And while it does that, I want to introduce to you in the uh, billing, in the uh, right in here, payment application billing, how now a prime pay application payout line has been created. Okay, so um, here, this is what I have uh, monthly billing. So let me just go back to settings. So we're going to go into the monthly billing. Uh, because that's what I have 
um, selected or entered here in my setting. So it would be under the monthly billing. Let me just open that up. And then you're going to come to your pay application layout lines in the owner billing. And we're going to look for that change uh, document. So uh, let's look for CCO 127. Go back. And you would enter that under the uh, description in the name, not the number. These are your building lines. Okay, and now you can see that a uh, pay application layout line was created as soon as you submitted those change details. However, there are still no amounts because we have not submitted, uh, got a quote and submitted the summary. Okay, so let's go back to the change management. So you can see this is checked off. We've done the change details. The next section of the change process is gathering quotes. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this up. So uh, we are here now. So a change quote is a document that gives a detailed breakdown of the unexpected costs or changes associated with the project, including things like labor costs, material quantities, costs, and other related details. And there are different change quotes type, uh, types that can be logged. You have, uh, for example, subcontracted quotes. So this is a figure that a contractor gets from a subcontractor for a scope change and it's assigned typically to a company. Uh, Self-performed quote is Ellis Bond driven, and you can also create an unassigned, you can get an unassigned quote, log an unassigned quote. It's not, uh, there's a cost associated, but there's not a, a company assigned to it. So we'll, we'll go into that. So we're in, at this um, part here now. So. This is grayed out. So I just, if you ever see that there's something that you can't click on or something's not showing up, um, get into the habit of coming over to more and just click refresh. So just give it a second. It should appear now. So there it is. So we are going to come over here, click new. And you see when you click new, you have two options. You can request a quote or add a subcontracted quote. So request a quote is when um, exactly how it looks is when you want to request a quote from a subcontractor, but you want to send it out of gate three. Add a subcontract, subcontracted quote is when you already have the information, already received the quote from the subcontractor, and all you have to do is just log it. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is request a quote. And then you can see here. Um, is the company name, the subcontractor, you'll select the subcontractor, um, and only uh, contracts, subcontractors that have existing contracts will appear here. Okay, so let's go ahead and select uh, A1 Landscaping. Okay, that is the contact, Bill Johnson for A1 Landscaping. You can add a response due date if you'd like, um, and I do want to notify the subcontractor of this quote. Okay, so confirm. Happening, I'm going to go into the communications module quickly uh, and view. And while that's loading, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so it is loaded. So let's go back to the quote. Um, so now um, a notification has been sent to A1 Landscaping to Bill Johnson at A1 Landscaping that we are requesting a quote. And we have sent all the information based on this attachment and the details here that we added in the first step. Okay. Um, so you can see here that we have that 10% overhead and profit, and that was pulled in, again, from our settings right here. If I go back, back to quotes, um, you'll see that that was pulled in. Now, right now at this point, what we're doing is we're waiting to get a response from the subcontractor. 
Um, and so right now you will see that has a status of under review. Um, so once you do get that quote and you want to log that quote, you can either click on the quote number here or come over to these uh, three dots, the ellipses here on the right hand side and click um, open quote. And then you'll click edit to log the information that you received from, um, from the subcontractor. Okay, so here's the company information, company name. Typically, you'll only see one contract here, um, but I'm in the training environment and um, that's why I probably see more than one. So I'm just gonna select one, you have to select it. Um, and then here, I'm just gonna put uh, retaining. Okay, and then I'll just put, um, uh, so then here, quote information. So you want to add here how much they quoted us. Okay, so maybe it was uh, 20,000. And um, you want to ensure that the tax is correct. So um, the subcontractor is based out of Ontario, quoted us with HST. So that's fine. That, however, can be changed. So if you're out in BC, you would pick CST here, and then you would come over here. Um, okay, so I don't have it set up in my training environment, but in BC, you have the two tags of PST and GST. Um, so you would have the ability to pull those in. Okay. If there were any schedule implications, you would just click yes um, and then fill out uh, the information, uh, you know, duration change, how many days, that kind of stuff. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is you want to attach that quote here. Okay, not only are we logging the information, you want to attach the quote we received from that sub. So you're going to come over to comments and attachments, attach file, and then add the quote. Okay, if you did make a mistake, then you would just click on the trash bin icon. You can add any additional comments here, um, anything you want really pertaining to this quote, um, any additional information. Uh, the sub will not get that, that information. Uh, just remember that you have to, once you're in here and you've attached the file added comments, just click apply. So um, it does keep that attachment in here. Okay. I'm going to go back to quote details. I'm going to save this. Okay, so this is the quote that we logged and requested from our subcontractor and we just received the information and logged um, the quote just now. However, it still needs to be reviewed by the PM of record. So as the PM, the PM is going to review this, click review, approve or reject it. And just get into the habit of um, clicking with flush. So hopefully there, were, there will be an enhancement for this down the road where we won't have to click refresh all the time. All right, so let's go back to quote. Okay, and now I'm just going to add a, uh, just, we've already have the quote. I just need to log it in gate three. I don't need to send out notification or request. So you would do add subcontracted quote. Again, you're gonna get the same um, quote document. Okay, uh, in this case, I'm gonna select um, a different company here. I'll just do Geo Foundations. Just more creation to It's not being okay. So I cannot use this one. Let's try a different one. Okay. So in this case, um, you would again typically you would normally only see one. Uh, again, this is training environment, so that's why there's a few. So I'm just going to go ahead and select one. In this case, um, the subject and the description were pulled in automatically. Um, so when I requested a quote, I actually had to massage this information, add information. Is where when you already have the information, you're just adding it. It automatically pulls in the subject and description. Um, and then here, you're going to add the quoted amount. So I'll put um, 30,000. And again, you're going to come over to comment and attachments, and you're going to add that.
quote and click apply. Okay, so now um, you can navigate. Oh, I got a save. Okay, so I can, um, I have the actual change document open. So um, I can just toggle back. I can close this too if I want. Okay, so we're back here. I'm just gonna click refresh again and uh, click on quote. All right, so you can see here that we have, um, this one is still under review. I thought it was reviewed. Let's just take another look. Review. That should change now. Um, there it is. Okay, so there's a bit of a delay. So it is now active. And now you can see that um, based on the um, 50,000, so it's 20,000, I got a quote for 20,000, a quote for 30,000, which equals 50,000 plus 10% overhead and profit, which is another 5,000. So that should come out to 55,000. And what is up here should match what is here, okay? Um, now let's do an unassigned quote. So maybe you, um, have you received a quote from someone but they don't yet hold a contract with us but we want to log that quote in gate three so here you would not select the company because they probably don't have a contract with us so you can't anyway so what you'll have to do is actually assign a cost account okay so um so because there is no contract requisition um in the meantime, uh, we would have to assign a cost account. So this quoted amount, uh, where is it going to be assigned to? So let's click assign cost account. I'm just going to select um, any cost account. Um, and this is like a shopping cart. So I have to come here, select it, click add cost account. It'll look here down below, and then I can pull it in. Okay, and then I got to put the quoted amount. So maybe this one was yeah. Uh, um, also, um, let's put maybe it's also thirty thousand. Um, it says U.S. dollars because this project that we created was created as a U.S. project. So yours would say Canadian. And then again, the sub is based in Ontario and HST, so that looks good. And let's attach that quote again. And click apply. Okay, and save. Okay, now I'm gonna get out of there and go back and click refresh again. Okay, let's go back to quotes. All right, so now you see that we have two subcontracted quotes and unassigned quotes. So um, I just want to show you, if you wanted to remove this overhead and profit, you could click edit. Um, and then you could uh, zero this out if you wanted to, just really a bit. Okay, and then it will become zero. Okay, so I'm going to put it back. You can also, in this view, you can also uh, choose to view taxes. Okay, you can see overhead and profits already displayed. Uh, copy quote attachments. Um, so if I decided to uncheck this, so maybe I want to send, I want to have this in my view, but I don't want to send this board and concrete quote over to the owner. I just want to send this one. I can still have it in my view. Okay. Or I can exclude it from this view if it was not, if it's not going to the owner. I'm just going to check that back. Um, and then if there were any canceled quotes, uh, if you wanted to see it in this view, you can do that as well. We don't have any canceled here right now. Um, and typically, you won't show the taxes. This is always done as um, subtold amounts. So I'm just going to uncheck that. But you have the ability to view the taxes as well. Okay. Um, 
So here we have uh, the unassigned. So let's say that um, we decided, uh, you know what, we're going to remove this one. You can always come in here at this point. Before we send this off to the owner, you can click open quote and then just come into that quote and click cancel document. So let's go ahead and cancel that. Are you sure you want to cancel this quote? Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to close this out. I'm just going to save this. Uh, okay, cancel. I'll click refresh. And go back down to quotes. Um, and you can see that that document that was canceled, that quote is no longer appearing here in the change document. Okay. Um, and another thing I want to show you is, uh, okay, so before we send this out to the owner, like I mentioned earlier, maybe we don't want to send this quote. So I'm going to click edit because I want to show you two things. So if I remove this, uncheck this, click save, and then if I were to scroll down, and preview the summary before I send it out. You'll always want to preview. Then I download a PDF and you will see that um, even though it still appears in gate three in, in my view, in the summary to the owner, that Gordon Concrete does not appear. Okay. So let me just click edit again and scroll to the quotes. Uh, if I want it to appear, I'm just going to check this back. If I want it in the in the quotes. So there's my quotes that we've gathered. This is what we're going to send to the owner now. So right now we're at this step. Chain summary. Chain summary is a log of one or more quotes that gets packaged to be sent to the client or the client's rep for review and approval. That's the step that we're at. So we're going to scroll down. And again, this again is from the settings. If you recall, um, you can set this up in the settings. If you want to add other costs, and this is why you see that in the change document. Um, sorry about that. And then if, you know, any additional costs, I can add them in here if I need to. Uh, we don't have any, so we're just going to go ahead. I'm going to cancel that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to gather those quotes and submit the summary. So I do recommend always doing a preview before submitting the summary for review. Now, when you click submit summary here, this does not go to the owner for review. Okay, you actually have to click forward. You have to use this feature in order to send it. What this does, submit summary, is it triggers workflow. It puts it under uh, into a review stage. So what happens is once we forward the summary with all the quotes to the owner and we've clicked submit summary, we're then at that point just waiting to hear back from the owner. Okay, so I'm going to click submit summary. Give it a second. Okay, so as soon as I click submit summary, now you see a, a review button appear. So um, I'm just going to make you aware that once you click review and approve you cannot go back and change this information so as the pm i would really um you want to hear back from the owner because they can approve and reject it or reject it so as, as soon as you have the information from the owner then i would recommend clicking review and based on the owner's response um, if it was approval of avert, the PM would come in here and do either or. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to, um, so the owner has approved the quote, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, but what you would have done when you submitted that summary, and before you reviewed it, you would just click forward um, to my owner, and I think it was um, Tom. So with Tom Architect, 
Okay, so then I would send this. I would, uh, if there's a subject, any comments I want to add, include the document attachments, and this is how I would send it to my owner. Okay, so if you were to go back into your communications, uh, let's just do a refresh. Um, so you can see, here are the quotes that we sent to the two subcontractors. So you can always, uh, this always gets recorded in your um, communications module. Um, and you can see here that I have sent that change summary to my owner. So I can open the email, okay? So all the information would be in here, uh, if there are any comments or anything, and, along with the attachments, okay? So if you wanna make sure that it was sent, you can always come into your communications module and take a look under uh, message archive. Okay, so view message archive. Let me toggle back. So we have now completed the change details, gathered the quotes and submitted the summary. So let's go over to distribution. So change distribution is distributing quotes or any other cost to the cost of budget and billing accounts. This will be submitted to costing for review and approval to ensure the distribution of costs are correct. So we're at the stage here, okay? So this is the distribution section. Um, and then if you recall in the beginning, in the settings, you can have this automatically set to yes to notify the subcontractor. Um, once the distribution is approved, um, a subcontractor change order will be sent to the sub. So that, again, that was in the settings. And that was here, I believe. Right here. And that's why it's set to yes in the change document. Okay. Uh, but before, so I'm stepping ahead here, before we do the distribution uh, part of this, because this is a contemplated change order, is therefore an external change order, it was requested by the owner, it affects the owner billing. At that point, we have to create a change order. Okay, so once you submit, uh, submit the summary, it's been reviewed, you will then see this button appear to create a change order. And a change order, it's just a procedural process and you're really, you're just logging that email uh, or formal document in gate three from the owner. That's what that is. But now that we've gathered our quotes and we've submitted our summary, I just want to go back into the billing module to show you what happened. So originally we just created that line was created, automatically created. There were no amounts. So let me just click refresh. And now you can see that we have um, in the main line, we have um, the 5,000. So this was the overhead and profit. So remember anything other than a subcontracted quotes will reside or be allocated to the main line, main change line. That's the 5,000. Let me just come back here. Okay, 55. Okay, so we have A1 landscaping. Gordon Concrete, 50,000, and then something is not right here. Oh, uh, this is not included. Okay, yeah, it's fine. So we did not, so I see what happened. We did not include this in the um, summary, and that's why you're not seeing the 50,000. But let me just click something here. So now that we've submitted the summary, I cannot um, check that. Sorry. I cannot check this back in. Let me check something here. Uh, so let me see. I can cancel the quote at this stage. And I'm going to go back into the change document. So I go to fresh and go back to the quotes. Okay. Okay, so that should have fixed it. Uh, let me go back to the lane again. Okay, that's better. So, um, because I had a Gordon Concrete, it would it ended in zero two. So I've removed Gordon Concrete, so you now don't see that zero two. Um, so you can see overhead and profit is on the main change line zero one, and then the subcontracted quotes 
would be 020304. So here you have the um, the prefix, okay, for this contemplated change order. So if I come back to my settings, just to show you the numbering, there is my prefix number for this change type, contemplated change order. And then um, we have our um, document number. So if I go back into the change management, it is CCO127. Okay. And then this is the main change line. And then again, subcontractors quotes. So now you see that there, we submitted the summary. So there are now pending changes. Let's go back one second. Okay. And so the next step you want to do, so because this, uh, you want to log the email or the formal document in the gate three, and because it is an external change and it does affect the prime billing, we are going to create a change order. Okay. So this is, we're here now. So when a change summary is reviewed and approved by the client, Depending on the type of contract, a change order needs to be logged in gate three prior to submitting the distribution. Okay. So I clicked on change order and it's going to ask you for a change order number. So what I typically do is the change document is CCO127. So for change order, I will put CO for change order 127. Uh, the date that this was issued, so the date that you got the information from the owner, obviously that's today's date. Um, and then here I'll put um, okay, and then the um, comments, details, whatever it is you're going to add here. Okay, don't worry about this. This is just the phase that it's in. This project is in the construction phase but this is not mandatory. So this obviously is mandatory because there's an asterisk, the subject description, change order number. And then you're gonna come down here and you're gonna add that change summary. So this CCO127 needs to be linked to this change order. So you're gonna click add change summary and it is CCO127 and there it is. And we're gonna pull it in. And when you pull it in, the change summary information shows up. So change order amount was 22,000. It gives you some uh, additional information on the original contract amount, uh, you know, the revised contract amount, and there's some tool tips you can hover over. Okay. So once you create the change order, log the information, you're gonna go ahead and click save. And now I'm gonna toggle back to my change document. And come over here, I'm going to flash. Okay, so if you want to view that change order, you can definitely do that. Um, so again, so let's move on to the distribution um, section. Uh, so we are here. Uh, change distribution is distributing quotes or any other cost to the cost budget and billing account. This will be submitted to costing for review and approval to ensure the distribution costs are correct. Okay, so you want to make sure you review this, preview it before you actually send it. So you can see this is the cost account uh, that's being pulled in. There's the um, budget line, and you can see there is the contemplated change order number, the, the change document number, and it's a subcontracted quote. Okay, the prime billing lines, contract pay app. You could click edit. If you didn't want to use these lines, you could just click exit out and add your own distribution lines. And then you would just click select cost account um, if you had to. Okay, uh, but the system is automatically pulling these in. So I'm going to click cancel. Okay, and then you just want to make sure again that the cost match. Uh, so you want to, you could do a preview right here. So this is what costing will see. 
Okay, so chain summary total of twenty two thousand. Um, so this twenty this will be affected. The budget this is the budget line that's being used. This is the subs billing line that's being used, and the prime, the owner billing line that's being used. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So at this point, you can go ahead and submit. Um, so I would, um, so this forward here in this section is if you want to forward to anyone else, or if maybe you had uh, up here in the distribution section, you had this uh, turned to no. So you would have to be in edit mode to switch from, uh, back and forth. So if this was set to no, uh, and then you wanted to actually uh, come in here afterwards and um, forward the information to them. You can do that afterwards. Okay, so once you've previewed the details, you want to submit the distribution. Okay, so now it is with costing. Now, if something um, you submitted it uh, and something is not correct or you need to change something, I would contact costing right away before they approve it. Okay, I'm just going to click refresh again. Okay, so I'm just going to back out for a sec. And I'm going to look for CEO. Okay, so you can see right now that uh, the change document itself is active. The summary status, it was submitted, approved. It is now uh, no longer in review. It is now active. It is now um, under review, the distribution status is under review with costing. So I want to go into the billing module. I'm just going to refresh this, and you're going to notice that the pending changes amounts will move from pending to contract changes. So let me refresh. Oh, sorry. Once the distribution has been approved, um, I don't know why I should be able to do that. Hold on, mind it. Not letting me. Okay, so um, because I'm not logged in as the cost accountant or costing, I cannot go ahead and approve this. Um, if I were able to approve this and then come back here, I could see that this amount would have moved from pending changes to contract changes and current contract. Okay, no problem, Vicki. Uh, we're just finishing up. Thank you so much for joining. Um, the same with the um, sub. So if you go in to view the uh, contract, the subs billing, um, I missed that, that was... Okay. So there it is, the CCO 127. Um, so there's the sub quote, and you can see pending changes 20,000 because it has not been approved yet by um, costing. Okay. There are also different views here. So if you click view, you have you can view quotes by company, you can view all quotes. So if there's a quote you want to view, you can come in here, um, quote type, maybe company name. Okay, there's a different quote. You can look for the one we did today, which would be, be this one here, the bottom. There is um, change quotes by workflow stage, change summary by workflow stage, change distribution by workflow stage. So let's go in there for a second. Um, changes workflow. This one, just bear with me a sec. Okay, I can all found it. Looks like um, someone came in here and made some changes. Okay, so it's under this one, change distribution workflow. Uh, yours would be a lot cleaner. Um, I can see uh, under uh, distribution review costing, so costing. So you can see, uh, you can view change distribution by workflow stage as well. Okay, um, and then acquisitions and changes. Um, so you have all these different views. If you want to look at a subcontractor change order, uh, we did today the A1. Okay. 
don't know why it's not coming up. Um, but it should be in here. Uh, oh, sorry, because the distribution has not yet been approved. Once it's approved, the SEO will reside here as well in this view. Any questions? 